Pilot was created by John Starkweather in the early 1960s as a programming language for computer-assisted instruction. It's been compared to Logo uh, because of its use with children. However, it's much simpler than Logo and really specialises in providing an easy way to create question and answer systems. Pilot source code consists of lines with the following format. So each line has uh, the chance of having a label and then a command and then some sort of conditional expression which will determine if the command is going to be run and then, the, uh, and then a colon and then the operands of the command. Any labels are prefixed with an asterisk and they're used by commands such as J and U. J jumps uh, to a label and U causes a user subroutine, uh, sorry, calls a user subroutine. And then the conditional expressions, one of the commands is M which matches against a string. So if we accept some input, and then we can match against that string to determine whether one of the, one of the operands of the match command matches the, the input that was given by the user. And then if it does, it'll set a logic flag uh, to either Y or N, and then we can use that in our conditional expression to determine whether we're going to run the command. And then there are, depending on the implementation of Pilot, there are lots of different possible commands, but this is a subset of commands that are common between most varieties of Pilot, most implementations of Pilot. They have little changes among, uh, among some of them, but generally this, these core commands feature in most of them. So I mentioned about asking for input from the user. So we have the A command, which can ask for input from a user from the keyboard and then store that in a variable. And then we have a command C, which can can compute an expression, so we could, for example, do something like i equals i, equals I plus 1. And then at the end of a subroutine, we mark that with e, which is also the end of a program. Uh, j, which I mentioned, jumping to a label. M, and then we can list strings after that, separated by commas. And then we'll match against the input that we accepted with the a command to see if it matches. And if it does, it'll set the y or n flag, which can then be used to determine whether we execute one of the other commands. And then R is a, a comment. Uh, then typing a string, so which is just displaying a string to the screen. And then U is used to define a subroutine. It's just, uh, sorry, to call a subroutine. And then if we use variables, the prefixes that are used by variables vary between implementations. Commonly, strings are prefixed with a dollar and uh, numbers are prefixed with a hash symbol. There are a few different versions of Pilot uh, for CPM, and the version I'm going to use here is called 8080 Pilot by uh, John Starkweather. It wasn't originally written for CPM, it was uh, produced for uh, an Intel MDS machine, I think, uh, but it was prepared for um, was prepared under contract here, as we can see, for Lister Hill National Centre for Biomedical Communications. So that's the, uh, the National Library of Medicine. And, um, and then it was later ported over to CPM by John Frederick, as we can see in 1977. So this is version 1.2, and this is the version on the uh, Walnut Creek CD. Although actually when we run it, it says that it's uh, version 1.1. But, um, but in any case, that doesn't matter. So if I have a look at a programme Written in, uh, written for this version of Pilot. Right there we are. So it's a Hello World program. So we can see the first line, the C colon, i equals one. So that indicates that uh, it, it's we're computing, uh, computing an expression, and we're setting i to one. And then the next line, the uh, asterisk loop line. So we're setting a label called loop. And then we're displaying or typing the string hash i hello world. So the hash i will reference the variable i as a numeric variable. So effectively on the first run it'll put one hello world. And then below that we compute again. So we're going to increment i. And then we're going to, on the next line, take i from 11. The reason we want to do that is that I want to display hello world 10 times. Some versions of pilot have more complicated expressions uh, after the command but before the colon. Uh, in 8080 pilot it's a lot more simplistic so we have the either y or n to determine whether a match has been made with the m command or we can use 
a variable itself, in this case I'm using j, so I do j and then j in parentheses to determine whether j is greater than zero. And if it is, then we'll jump and we'll jump to the label loop. And if not, that, um, that won't jump and it'll reach the E command, uh, which will exit the program. Or at least that's the theory it should do, except that for some reason, 8080 pilot doesn't respond to the E command properly. So therefore, it gets to this point and it just seems to get into a loop. But, uh, but that's, in, that's what it should do in any case. And there might be a way around that, or it might be something I'm missing. But, uh, but there we are, that's demonstrated how to uh, run a quick Hello World program. I'll just reset this CPM and uh, display the program once more. Okay, so that's CPM reset. And then I'll display that source code once more so we can see the Hello World program. And, uh, and there it is. And then there's another program I'd like to, to show, uh, which shows how we can use the matching and the subroutines. So there was originally a program on here called Weird. Okay, which did this, uh, but I've extended it a little bit because I want to show the subroutines and uh, I want to show it a little bit more complicated than that. So, okay, so here's the, um, the strawberry command, uh, strawberry program. So all this program does, it asks the user to type strawberries or uh, quit or exit. And if you don't type either strawberries or quit or exit, it'll ask you again. So that's the first line telling you what, uh, what it wants you to do. And then below that, we have the A command. So we're accepting input from the user. And we're going to install that user, store that input in a variable, a string variable called fruit. And then we're going to match against that in the following line. So we're matching against the accepted input and we're looking for either quit or exit. And then if either quit or exit are contained in the accepted string, then it'll set the logic flag. And then below that, the JY command, we're actually using, we're testing for the logic flag. So we're saying jump if yes. So if we make a match, then jump. And then if we do match, if we do jump, then we're jumping to the quit label. So therefore those two lines are saying, check if it's either quit or exit. And if it is, jump to the quit label. And, uh, and then as we see further down, there's an E there, we should end the program. And then if not, so if we don't jump, then that means the control of the program will just flow further down and we'll then try and match against strawberries. And then below that, we have the U command. So we're using, a subroutine or calling a user subroutine, whichever way you want to look at it. We're uh, again using the conditional expression. So why, if it uh, if the accepted string matches against strawberries, then we're going to jump to the user subroutine I like. And then if we don't match against that, control will flow through and we'll be at the next line, jump, so J, to the loop label. So it'll keep looping unless we enter either quit, exit or strawberries. And then we can see near the bottom the uh, the final uh, sorry the penultimate label I like, which is saying I sure like, and then dollar fruit so it references the string that we accepted before. So uh, in this case, it'll always say I like strawberries and cream because it has to because it can only get to there if we'd entered strawberries. So we'll I'll run this program, and there we are. Type strawberries or else. So if I write Fred, nothing. If I type strawberries, there we are. And then if I type Fred again, it'll ask me again. And then if I type quit, in theory it would quit. You can see it's returned back to the pilot 8080 prompt, but for some reason it doesn't quit the program. As I say, it's quite possible I've just misunderstood how this works. But, uh, but you get the idea and you can see how it can work. Um, it can be quite complex as well. If I reset one more time and then I'll show something a little bit more complex with that. In actual fact, before I show something a bit more complex, I just want to display that source code once again just to get a good idea of how it works. And then the code I wanted to show, which is a little bit more complex, is a test program that comes with this. 
This version of 8082 Pilot, by the way, is in the uh, is on the War Walnut Creek CD in a package or an ARC file called cpmug012.arc. It's the first entry in the directory listing. That also contains a another program called ZPilot, which I might show quickly in a minute. Um, but uh, it's one of a number of programs on the Walnut Creek CD, a number of implementations of Pilot on the CD. I've linked to these on the, on the uh, associated article on the Tech Tinkering website. So do have a look on there uh, for a bit more in depth and to, uh, to see uh, how to find those files. So I'll show this first actually. Here we are. So this is um, a a longer pilot program that came with this uh, with this package and then we can go through and it's asking us about various things that we'd like to do and it's fairly straightforward given the time to look through it properly okay so do I want to display the program yes there we are, and there's the program. Begin by typing anything. So there you are, you can see that it's accepting input and redisplaying it easily. So here we are, we're going to look for the strings either ABC space DEF or space GHI space. So we'll see how well it's going to do in that. So if I put um, thread F, let's see if it matches against that. No, it doesn't because it needs a space, which is correct. Now if I put these spaces in, there we are, so it matched that time. And uh, if I want to type a number from 0 to 99, so 33, 22, keep doing this. Now, but the point is it's sort of accepting input and returning um, returning an answer. Uh, so for a sort of question and H, a question and answer system where we might be presented with information and then tested on it or uh, or just check that uh, we understand it before we move on to the next section in a learning environment that could be really handy. And uh, I mentioned that there were a number of pilot implementations on the Walnut Creek CD, and I'll show a few of those now. I've already mentioned 8080 Pilot, and, um, and this is uh, perhaps the first version of Pilot that was on CPM, uh, 1977. Uh, interestingly, actually, uh, John Starkweather says in, a, uh, in the March 1982 edition of InfoWorld that he's going to release a that he's going to release the CPM version, uh, which is odd considering that there was already a version released in 1977. I don't know what he would have added to that version. Looking at the um, the explanation of it, or at least his plans in the the magazine article, it didn't sound as if he was going to add a lot more to the existing version. So I don't know what his thoughts behind that were, or, or indeed whether he ever did release the version for CPM. Uh, but in any case, uh, here's the version from 77. And then uh, this version of 8080 Pilot comes with source code and, uh, and it comes with a couple of programs. There's also another version on that same uh, archive, that CPM UG012, called Z Pilot. So this is Z80 only, as you can imagine. Much smaller. Uh, if I have a look at the COM files, there we are. So we can see that. Pilot is 5K in size, whereas Z Pilot is only 1K in size. However, oh, in fact, on, on that as well, if I look at the ASM files, there we are. So we can see that pilot.asm is 67K and, uh, and pmon.asm, which it needs, is 5K whereas zpilot or z80 is only 7k, so there's a massive difference there. But it comes with reduced functionality. zpilot uh, doesn't accept, uh, it, it can't do computation, so it doesn't have uh, numerals and uh, numerics. It also doesn't have user subroutines, so that's a big change. And, um, but if you're just doing question and answer format, then, then it'll be absolutely fine for that. 
So if I demonstrate with one of the included programs that it comes with, a quick look. Okay, so Goldilocks. In fact, Goldilocks is quite a good example of pilot generally. Here we are. So once upon a time, there were three bears. Who do you think they were? Uh, daddy, mummy, and baby. So what does she do next? So she ate the yogurt, did she? Here we are. So we're going through just question and answer style format. And there we are, we can see it's used the strings to fill in to fill in the blanks in the way. Uh, then the big daddy bear chased Goldilocks all over the house because she ate the yogurt. Goldilocks hid under the bed, baby bear hid under the bed, they sat on baby bear's electric train and I don't know. And then pretty soon baby bear came in yelling, who ate up all my yogurt? I'm not quite sure what we're meant to reply here. Press enter. Goldilocks laughed. Baby Bear laughed even harder. He said, who's been eating my porridge? Mama Bear, Mama Bear said. They went on a picnic, they packed. Okay, and here we are. We can see it's used the strings from before. The Baby Bear said, who's been eating my porridge? Mama Bear said, who's been sleeping in my bed? The great big daddy bear said, oh, I meant to fill in the string. Okay, well anyway, you get the idea. So, um, so there we are, that's Goldie. Should we have a look at the source code for that? Right, here we are. So, this is the thing about Pilot. Although it's not that complex, although it doesn't have the complexity of logos, certainly, which, with which I said it's often compared. Uh, oh, 1977, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know whether this was originally written. I don't think this was originally written for Z-Pilot. Uh, I think this was probably written for um, 8080 Pilot and then ported over to Z-Pilot. Now, uh, one thing you can see a little bit further down, if you look at um, the first label, Star Next, so Z-Pilot uses the label, uh, the label name, to be the name that the accepted input. So it says star next and then a colon. So the result of the accepted input will go into the next, uh, a variable called next, as opposed to putting the variable after it. So that's one difference between Z pilot and 8080 pilot. There's a few other differences as well. Uh, we can see um, in the uh, in the lines that start, Goldie, uh, Goldilocks laughed, Baby Bear laughed even harder, he said, and then we can see slash said there. So Z Pilot uses a slash to indicate that we're going to put the string there rather than a dollar. But these are minor differences and uh, easy to adjust to. Uh, one thing that, uh, <laughs> that's very notable about Z Pilot, of course, is it actually exited and returned us back to a CPM prompt uh, once uh, once it had finished running. So uh, yep, there we are. There's a uh, the Z Pilot. The next version I want to show is Pilot 80. So this was written for MBASIC and we can see it's in the pilot80.lbr file. Uh, this is from the Walnut Creek CD. There's a, a link in the associated article which will show how to find that. And uh, if I have a quick look at the code, we can see that it was written by Kurt, uh, Kurt Elbrecht in 1983. I'm not going to go through the code, but there are a few interesting things about this version of Pilot. So one one interesting thing is that it actually has an editor built into the code. So uh, you can edit your programs and then try them and then list them and then edit and try. So you get some nice interactive development there. Uh, this is uh, vnc.pil. This is a Pilot program written for this version of the uh, this implementation of Pilot. And uh, we can see that it's just a standard program to talk about, uh, to test and demonstrate vowels and consonants. Uh, one interesting thing we can see in the uh, one, two, three, fourth line down, S colon clear. So this version of Pilot has a screen function. So in this case, clear would clear the screen, at least in theory, depending if your terminal supported it, depending on how it implements it. So if we start mBasic.
because it's M-basic, of course, it's going to be a little bit slower. But having said that, this, uh, this implementation doesn't support the compute command, so therefore it's really mainly computation that will slow things down significantly. It shouldn't be too much of an issue for, uh, for this style of these style of programs. And there we are, so we can list, uh, we can edit, so if I wanted to edit line 42 for example, I could put in there, uh, oh, I don't know, I could put, and there we are, and then we could list 30 to 40, oh, sorry, list 40 to 50, and there we are, we put my comment in there, and then if we run it, so you can see it's displaying quite slowly, but not really an issue for this type of thing. Uh, my In fact, I quite like the way it prints, if I'm honest. So one thing you may have noticed there is that I didn't press return. And that's because this, this implementation of Pilot has an I command, which accepts single key input, which is really nice for this style of thing. So try and name a consonant. So let's get it wrong first of all. Yes, I do. A consonant. And we'll try R. No, I don't. And there we are, we're back to the M basic command prompt. Uh, sorry, to the pilot command prompt. And there we are, we're back to the CPM command prompt. So, uh, yeah, pilot 80 is quite nice, and uh, it's nice to have the, have the edit function in there so you can get that uh, interactive development or iterative development uh, used more easily. The last version of Pilot I want to show from the Walnut Creek CD is called Pilot P, Pilot slash P. And uh, this was written, well, at least the version on the Walnut Creek CD is version 2.5, and that dates from 1984. It says that it was written by David Mundy and Raymond Penley. So uh, it's an interesting version, though, because this doesn't actually run Pilot code. It transpiles it to uh, Pascal Z source code. So this is quite different. So if we have a look at the, uh, inside the archive, Right, so it it really is very different indeed. It supports more Pascal. It actually supports Pascal statements within the source code. If I look at one of the files, here we are, uh, thirty-four. So sample dot sample four dot plt. And then we can see uh, where we get the first set of indentation, and we can see the percentage sign. So percentage colon print. So this is defining a function uh, called print uh, with variables output, and there's a text uh, text variable, and then message, uh, sorry, um, parameters, sorry, uh, a message, which is string. And then if you look at the C line, we're actually using a write line. So this is a Pascal statement being used in the compute function of pilot. So this is really interesting. It gives it a lot more power because you can draw on the power of Pascal. Having said that though, you then have to decide, well, wouldn't this maybe just easier to, wouldn't this have been easier just to write in Pascal in the first place? Maybe not, I guess it depends on the situation. But, uh, but it's interesting that you can do it. Right, so we can use the pilot p command to transpile a pilot, some pilot source code into a Pascal file. So if we do that, uh, okay, yes, that was my fault. It assumes the PLT uh, extension. And uh, now if we've created sample1.paz, you know, look at that. And there we are, some Pascal source code created from our pilot source code. This could then be compiled by Pascal Z. In fact, uh, this version contains some subfiles uh, for SuperSub. If we have a look, uh, 25. There we are. 
So this is actually a sub file for super sub. Uh, so it, it automates the process. So we can see pilot slope, uh, stroke p, and then it compiles using the Pascal. Uh, sorry, it uh, transpiles into Pascal, and then then we call the Pascal compiler. Then we assemble it, arrays, link, and then so we're doing some tidying up, some linking. But it automates the process that we might want to do to create our final com file using uh, uh, first transpiling and then. Um, compiling and assembling and linking. So yeah, I thought I'd show Pilot P because although I can't demonstrate it, uh, or I could demonstrate it with Pascal Z, but I think it's overkill for this video, but it gives an idea of something else or at least another way of looking at Pilot. So hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the various implementations of Pilot, uh, finding out a little bit more about Pilot itself. Uh, there's some more videos about CPM and um, vintage computers on the Tech Tinkering YouTube channel. There's an associated article to this video also on the Tech Tinkering website as well as other articles about vintage computers. So um, do subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos of this type and uh, thanks for watching.